Well hello and welcome to another video. In this quick tip I'm going to show you how I join velvet widths together. Most of the instructions you'll find will tell you to put lots of pins in or possibly even tack uh, the joins first before you take them to the machine and by all means if you've not used velvet before or you're new to it or you don't do it very often then by all means use lots of pins because it is one of the few ways that you will stop it creeping it's still down to handling I have to say even with lots of pins um, you can find it'll still creep that being the main challenge with velvet in that there's pile on the face of the fabric this very beautiful mustard velvet here has got quite a long pile uh, you can probably see there and the fibres stick out from the face of the fabric and orient one way and when you put the two widths together those two lots of pile tend to fight each other as you sew it so one pushes against the other one and slides and you get a lot of creeping and what you end up with is one with the fabric with puckers in it at the join and the other a bit stretched out and then the two ends not lining up together so it can be a challenge it's hard work if you're pinning or tacking the widths first you need to do that at the table you've got widths and widths of fabric I mean this this particular pair of curtains I'm making here are two and a half widths in each and they're full length for sort of 250 drop or something so all that work and actually all that extra handling and putting pins in can mark the velvet more so you want to reduce the amount of handling on the velvet anyway but this method I use really is just down to how you handle the fabric at the sewing machine um, and how much tension you put on. Not something that can be easily done on a domestic sewing machine really because you really need the, the, the sort of strength of the sewing machine underneath you and you don't want it to be able to move. So where you might have a domestic machine just sitting on a tabletop, you might not be able to get enough purchase really. You'll be pushing the machine around. So. I've got two widths here, two pieces, so I'm just going to take these to the machine and I shall show you how I do it. So here we are at the machine and I have my two pieces of fabric, um, both with the pile running the same way and in this particular case I've got it with the pile running down. So on both, when I stroke down, they're smooth that way, if I smoke to go the other way, it's rough. You can feel you're, you're rubbing against the pile. I tend, I just tend to do it this way, with the pile running down. Um, but you can do it the other way. I mean, the, the principle's the same. But I, I've just got used to doing it this way. I think if you get used to doing it one way, you best stick into that because you you build up a sort of method of your own and a consistency. So simple to start, really. Just. Put a couple of stitches in just to hold. And then the trick is, if I was to just lay that like that and sew it without really putting holding or putting any pressure anywhere, what will happen is this top piece will creep down and you'll end up with that sort of effect. This will be tight and this will be slightly puckered because this pile is pushing against this pile and, and it'll do that. So the trick is to get your two pieces together like that so that they're evenly tensioned but then 
put a bit more tension on the under side so I tend to pull that one tight and then let, let the top one just sit comfortably sort of relaxed on top of it and then I sew down there but what I do is I hold this section really firmly so you need to start off to give you a bit of something to hold first and then get a really good grip so so the same thing again let them lay naturally as they want to but then put a bit of tension on this underside a bit less a bit of pucker in the top piece hold it so what you're doing is you're sort of mitigating that creep as you go you're forcing it back all the time so same thing, pull tight so you've got the whole thing is smooth before you sew and then onwards. So same thing again, pull this bottom one taut, lay the top one on top, slack, hold it really firmly, hold it firmly with your other hand at the back, pull tight and so so already you can see that if you have a domestic machine you may find you've pushed the machine off the table already <laughs> so you need the weight of um, an industrial behind you or underneath you should I say so I'll continue on and then this piece these pieces are cut at 260 something long um, so you'll see there's quite a long way to go and to, to be confident that you're gonna, the, the two ends are going to meet at the other end um, it might take a bit of practice but you'll get used to the feel of it as you go so same thing I've just with my, what I tend to do is I put my fingers in like that I pull that one underneath let that one just sit relaxed on top hold it firm and go. I'll just show you here. You can see that actually there's a good tension, the same between the two. You have a nice flat seam. I'm not sure I've done enough yet to show you. Um, not one side's puckered or the other. So I'll keep going and we'll see when I get to the other end if the ends meet. I've run out of thread, ain't that typical? Okay, so, <laughs> bobbin replaced, replenished, and I shall continue. So, tension on the bottom piece, slack on the top, hold firm, back and front and so and it depends on the pile actually how much you need to put tension on the underside and leave the slack on the top like I said this is quite a, a, a longish pile um, so I'm putting a fair amount in some of the velvets that are shorter you won't need as much some of the really closer um, pile velvets might not be as bad and what I tend to do once we're about and a metre from the end, I'll just line up the two ends and check that I'm going to be 
meeting and you can see I've put the two ends together there you might not see the full extent of this because the camera won't show it all but you can see there's not a particular gape so the, I'm, I'm running at the right rate basically but still continue to put in that extra tension because it's it's still pushing all the time the, the, you'll give it a bit of ease but then it'll push it back again so what you gain it'll take back from you and then when you get to the end you can hold the two ends together hold it really firm and just whiz right down to the bottom There you go, you can see I've ended with the two ends together. So I'll put it on the table and we'll open it up and uh, see how it looks. So here we go, here's the join. And as you can see, it's laying pretty flat on the table already. Um, I've obviously got to press the seam at some point. So I shall do that in a moment. Uh, and what I tend to do when I press it is just use the tip of the iron I don't iron it completely flat because you can put an impression on the right side um, I tend to use the tip of the iron as I go um, really just on the very seam itself so you don't get too much of a, an imprint on the other side so I'll do that now so the pile is running up the piece here so I'll just put the tip of the iron on the seam itself and press upwards with the pile and not put the heel of the iron down just so we can press this the very seam itself open and I'll tend not to use too much steam either at this point there we go so if I turn it over you can see we've got a nice Back join, which way is the pile that way? I'll turn it over as well so you can see the full extent. So there we go, nice flat join. Um, there's a bit of marking on this velvet here from where it was packed on the roll, so I'll need to steam that out at some point, but the seam itself, nice and flat, bottom edges are together, the top edges are together also, um, so we know that there's no creep either way and it's going to hang nice and flat. There we go, hope that helps. Thank you, goodbye.